In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create and use our own methods. So to get started, go ahead and close our types and variables.java if you have it open. Go to the default package, right click, select new, and class. We're going to call this class methods and click finish. As usual, we'll begin by creating our main method by typing the word main, pressing control plus spacebar, and hitting enter. I think it would be easiest to learn methods by example. So I'm going to create one here by going after the closing curly brace of the main method and typing static void say hello world parentheses opening curly brace hit enter and Eclipse will automatically close the curly brace for you. Now we've created a skeleton of a method called say hello world. Inside of this method I'm going to put a system.out.print line in quotes. I'm going to say hello world. So now I've created a method that when called will print hello world to the console. So the way we call a method is inside of our main function we type the method's name say hello world, followed by parentheses, and a semicolon. Now if we were to run it, we'll see that hello world has been printed to the console. So what happens here is that the main method begins running, it gets to this line, it then jumps down into the say hello world method and executes all the code inside of it. So it will run the system.out.print line hello world, and after that, it will return back up to the main method and begin executing whatever is below the say hello world call. In our case right now, nothing is there, so the program is finished. We could, however, copy this line and paste it a few times, and the method would be called that many times. So the key thing to understand here is that when a method runs, the code jumps down to where the method is defined, executes the code inside of it, then returns back to where it was. In our case it would return here, go down to the next line, run the method again, return, go to the next line, run the method again, return, and then we're done. Now that's sort of the most basic example of a method. All it does is breaks your code up into fragments where each method has a certain job to do. That can be very handy because it makes your code more organized and more readable, but methods are more powerful than that. We could also create a method that takes some data with it when you call it. So an example of that would be, after our main method, I'm going to type static void say hello to parentheses and this time inside of the parentheses I'm going to type string name opening curly brace hit enter and it should close it for you now inside of this method I'm going to type siso quotes hello comma space outside of the quotes plus name now what happens when we call the say hello to function, it expects that you pass some data along with it. It's going to expect a string, and it's going to call that string name. And when the method runs, we're going to print out hello plus that name. So up here, as an example, I'm going to delete a couple of those say hello worlds and type say hello to Charlie and go ahead and run it. And we'll see that Hello Charlie has been printed to the console. You could also say say hello to John. Put a semicolon at the end and run that. Now we'll see that the first time it runs 
it says hello Charlie and the second time it runs it says hello John and that makes sense because when the program executes this line it goes to the say hello to method and Charlie is passed in and when it executes this line it goes to the say hello to method but this time John is passed in so we can call a method and pass different data to it every time just like our system.out.print line. This is actually a method call and we've been using it all along. Now not only can methods take in data as parameters, they can also return data back to you. So an example of this would be, after our main method, I'm going to type static int return 5 parentheses, opening curly brace, hit enter. Now I'm going to type the keyword return space 5 semicolon. Now when this method runs, it's going to return a value to us. The type returned is indicated in the function here by the keyword int. The keyword void in these functions means that the function has no return value. So if we wanted to see our return 5 in action, we could say int x equals and then call that function return 5 parentheses semicolon now we can do a system.out.print line on x and run it and we'll see that 5 has been printed to the console so now you've seen three different ways that methods can be used let's put comments on our code so we can remember how it works so for return 5, I'm going to say this method returns an int type with the value 5. For say hello to, I'm going to say this method will say hello to whatever name is passed when called. And for this method I'm going to say this method simply says hello world. So one of the key things to understand about how methods work is that they can return values as is the case with our return 5 method. They can take in some data and work with that data as is the case with the say hello to method which takes in a string parameter called name, or it might not return a value or take in any data, as is the case with our say hello world method. Just remember that anytime you see code that looks like this, a name followed by parentheses, this code is calling a method. So if we look at our system.out.print line, print line is actually a method that has been defined somewhere else and we're simply using it. In this tutorial we've made our own methods and we've called them. Now for one final example let's create a method that both returns a value and takes in data. A good example of this sort of method might be similar to a function from mathematics where you would say f of x equals let's say x times x. So this function is going to square the number. So how would we write that in Java? Well, let's comment that line out and go down below the main method and type static int because it's going to return an integer and we'll call the method square. Type parentheses and inside of the parentheses type int x. Now we need an opening curly brace, hit enter, type the word return, and then x times x, semicolon. Now if we go up to main, we can delete this line, and let's say int result equals square 5. And below that line, we'll do a system out and show what the value of result is. Now we can go ahead and run that. And we'll see that 
at the bottom here the last thing that's printed out is 25 which is the result of 5 squared. Now what we could also do instead of passing in 5 here we could pass x because x has the value of 5 from our previous method call. So we were to replace 5 with x and run it again we would once again get 25. However, we could even take it a step further. And this may confuse you, but don't worry about it too much. Instead of passing in x, we could pass in return 5. And if we run that, we'll see that once again 25 is printed to the console. So what's happening here is if we get to this line of code, we're declaring an integer called result. And we're assigning to that variable what the right side of the equal sign evaluates to. In order to evaluate this, we first need to evaluate return 5. So we go into that function, it returns a 5, so 5 is placed in. We then call square with the value of 5 which returns 5 times 5, which is 25, which ultimately gets assigned to result and then printed out. Hopefully that didn't confuse you too much. And if you're wondering, there's no limit to how far we could go with this. For example, we could say in systemout.println, instead of printing the result, we could print the square of return 5. And we can run it to ensure it works. And once again 25 is printed to the console. So what happens here is it goes to the innermost function call and evaluates that, which is return 5. So it goes down here, returns a 5, and this evaluates to a 5. Now we're calling square with a value 5 which goes down to this method and returns 5 times 5, which is 25, and that's what gets printed out. Now, normally that's not very good coding style, especially when you're starting out, but you are likely to encounter code that looks like that, so I thought it would be good to give you an example of it. And let's put a comment on this method. We'll say this method both returns a value and takes in data. So hopefully now you have some understanding of how to call and create methods. Methods are like the basic building blocks in programs. They help to manage complexity by isolating code that accomplishes a specific task. If you're having trouble understanding how everything works, don't worry, there will be plenty more examples as we go through future tutorials.